Hey guys, I recently purchased the new Black Series Boba Fett Deluxe figure from Target. Uh, and I was asked by quite a few people if I could do something of a tutorial for how I would fix it or how to fix it. I wasn't originally planning on picking this guy up because I didn't really like a lot of it, but since so many people asked, I'm going to do it. Alright, so before I begin the tutorial, I want to show you what the finished figure is going to look like. This is it right here. This is the final product. Um, what we're going to change is we're going to repaint the armor, we're going to repaint the helmet, we're going to repaint the forearms. We're going to add detail like that's missing, like with the spats here. We're going to apply a dark wash on the figure. We're going to weather him. Uh, we're going to fix the yellow color on the backpack to be more accurate to the movie. We're going to fix the pouches. We're going to make the knee pads bendable like that so that they aren't stuck to the thigh. We're going to fix the helmet as well, make sure it's not all messed up. We're going to repaint the gloves so they actually match the Return of the Jedi gloves. We're going to do a lot. This is a long tutorial. I think this is going to come out to be like an hour and a half long. I'm going to include timestamps so you can skip to what you want to see. But, I mean, if you if you happen to follow the whole video, then you will have an awesome Boba Fett. So, hopefully this tutorial is helpful. This is a bit of a different thing for me making a tutorial this long. But, I, you know, I'm sure there's someone who it's going to help. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so now we're going to be in the process of unwarping the helmet. Here I have two uh, glasses. The left one is, has boiling water in it that just came off the... Uh, just came off the stove, it's very warm, and on the right is some water that has been sitting in the freezer for a couple minutes, maybe like 15 minutes, so there's some ice in here. It is very cold. Uh, the idea is that we're going to dunk the helmet in the boiling water for about 30 seconds, and then we're going to transfer it to the, uh, and we're going to shape it first, actually. We're going to slightly press it so we can unwarp the, the sides, and then we're immediately going to put it in the freezing water, that way the plastic will harden and it won't unwarp. Alright, so with some experimentation, I found the best way to get the helmet to look as close as possible to how it should look. Get down to focus. Uh, actually, you want to pop off the helmet from the head, or from the body, and then once you have the helmet off, all you want to do is you just want to submerge it in the boiling water for about, I would say, like 30 seconds. I just dropped it in there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take it up and pick it up and put your thumbs on the inside of the helmet where the ear caps are and push out and then push it into the ice water and that will give you the perfect shape. When I was trying to do it on the body it just wasn't looking like how I wanted it to look. I was getting a little bit fresher with it so I tried popping it off and it looks so much better so about 30 seconds have elapsed let's go ahead and pop them out. There we go. So now what you're going to do is you're just going to put your thumbs right there. Let's get this to focus. Put your thumbs right here at the bottom, you're going to push a little bit, and you're just going to put it right into the water, the cold water. Now we'll dry them off. And that will give you a shape that is, has that nice signature wide bottom of Boba Fett. There we go. To get the uh, head back on to the neck, I would just submerge the body in boiling water to get that neck nice and warm. Uh, also, when you remove the helmet, too, I would heat it up with boiling water as well before you shape it. That way you can pop it off easily. If you try and remove the head from the body without heating it up in some form, it'll probably have the potential to like snap or break because these pegs aren't always the strongest. There we go. Just pop that on. And let's try and get it to focus real quick. There we go. That's looking a lot better than the original. It's not perfect, certainly. Like There are definitely some things that, that don't quite look right about it, but it's definitely better than before. So I'm happy with it. I wish it was a solid sculpt, but you know it's not, so you got to work with what you have. All right, so first I'm going to start off with a jetpack. Uh, as a reference, I'm kind of going off of this image of the backpack from Anovos. There's some other images you can find that are actually of the prop. They're not the greatest quality, but they look about the same. So I'm gonna be going for that color. It's kind of like a orange rust kind of color. Uh, so to do this, all the colors I'm gonna be using are gonna be, of course, Vallejo Air Orange Rust. Uh, I might use a little bit of yellow ochre, and then really any sort of gray or black will do. So let's go ahead and mix this first. Oops, there we go. A little bit of orange. And then, yeah, definitely some yellow ochre I would add for sure. I'm liking that. Let's add a bit more gray. Let's get after it. Let's start at the top. OK, 
Okay, now we'll go and paint the main body as well with this color. Okay, now we'll go back over this. It's important not to have too much paint on your brush when you do this, just a light, a light coat, and then you can go back and do multiple thin, thin coats. If you get any paint on this little metallic part, it's not a big deal. I just have to use a Q-tip once it's dry and just kind of scrape at it and it'll come right off. Go. Right now we're going to switch to a thinner brush to do the little tiny bit inside here. I'm just going to wipe off so I have too much paint on it and just go right in here. There go. Remember just doing thin, thin layers for now. Alright, I really like this so far. This is looking a lot better. I'm going to go and use a needle and just scrape away a little bit the areas where the paint I was using kind of uh, went a little bit out of where I wanted it to go. But for the most part it looks really good. I'm going to let that dry. Just let it sit for a little bit and we'll do another coat. While we're on it, I'm going to paint some missing details uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the design here. The first one I'm going to do is there's supposed to be a little bit of like a kind of black ring around this red bit right here. Just looking at the reference picture right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and kind of match this silvery color. I'm going to paint it as a base color. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to paint that little black band. So for the silver color, we're going to use this again. I believe this is Panzer Gray right here. I'm using this. And we're going to be using Vallejo Air Silver right here. Let's pour a little bit out. Then we'll just add the smallest bit of this Panzer Gray to this silver because the silver on its own would be too bright and it wouldn't match. It wouldn't match what's already painted on the rocket. And we like matching. I'm not adding the paint directly into the mix because then we could like completely make it too dark. It's good to just add a little bit at a time until you get kind of what you want. I think this should be good right here, let's see. Again, I have a little bit of paint on the brush, not too much. Just going to paint right here. Yeah, that's a, re that's a really good match. Very happy with that. Let's also, while we're at it, repaint these little uh, silver things right here using the same color as the jetpack. There we go. Don't forget to paint the top. This is already looking really good. I think significantly better than when we started off. Now that we've given this some time to dry, I think my mix for the yellow is still a bit too light. So I'm going to go and just make it a little bit darker, and we can go back and repaint over that, no problem. Again, I'm going to add some more of this Panzer Gray to this mix. I'm not going to add it directly into the mix so we don't make it too dark and then ruin it. I'm just going to do a little bit at a time. I think this should be good right here. Let's try this out. I'm just going to get all the paint off first. All right, cool. All right, now we're gonna fix the little black band that I kind of painted over. I'm gonna use Panzer Gray again. I wouldn't use an exact black for this because it's not quite black. It's more of just like a really, really dark gray.
Now we will add the second uh, dark stripe and that'll go right here on kind of just like the middle of this. I would just say go slow and don't be too worried because if you don't make it perfectly straight you can always go back and clean it up with the silver we made. There we go. Black band is painted. Also going to go and I'm going to paint in the missing paint details here on the thrusters down here. Bring it down here a little bit. There we go. Alright, let's go and do it. Now we're just going to go and paint in these little details right here. Let's do the other side as well. Let's do this as well here. Alright, so this is looking pretty good. Now I'm just going to add some scratches to this. We're just going to add some scratches to the silver area, or the, uh, sorry, the, the like orange rust area. I think I might just use pure silver because it looks like the, the dark silver mix we made is a little bit too dark to show up very well on this. Yeah, there we go. It looks pretty good. Also had some silver marks up here. I'm also going to add some silver to the back because it looks like there's some some weathering here that's kind of missed. sides as well. Let's add some here. Because this is where it would get damaged, is on these edges. Now I'm just going to add a few little dark areas in areas where they should be. I'm just looking at the reference here. Looks like there's like a scratch right here. Let's add that. Alright, now I'm pretty happy with this. This looks really good. This thing I've noticed while looking at this guy is I think that all of his like armor colors, like his, his uh, chest and his like wrists, I think they're all just like a couple shades too dark. But at least looking at kind of the pictures of the costumes and the like pictures in the film, I think they might just be a little bit too dark. I'm gonna go and I'm going to add the, there's like some yellow weathering underneath the silver weathering that's missing. So I'm gonna try and add that. I'm also going to go with the visor. There's some um, some little areas here where it's kind of unpainted where you can see the green underneath. I'm just going to paint that red and just in general clean up the visor lines. Uh, I'm also going to go, I'm going to fix, these hands are kind of like a glow in the dark color. So I'm going to I'm going to paint over that. And then the spats, uh, or like, I don't know exactly what you call these. Gators maybe, these little things he wears around his ankles. These are actually kind of like a, a like cream color, so I'm going to paint those because those are unpainted. And then after that, then I'm going to seal him, and then I'm going to go and I'm going to actually weather him. So, let's see how this turns out. I've decided that I'm going to repaint the armor, the green color in the armor, because I think it's just a bit too dark for Return of the Jedi Boba Fett. I'm going to start off by using a light green chromate, and I'm going to go from there. I'm just going to mix the paint right here so you can see it. There we go. Whenever I mix paints, I just keep right next to me a picture of what I'm mixing. I'm going to be going for this color right here. I found this pretty much the exact color for Return of the Jedi Boba Fett. So, I have it right next to me. Looking at it, looks like we're going to start off add a little bit of gray. 
some dark gold gray right here. It's basically like a medium gray. Gonna add that. Just see how the colors work together and then go from there. General rule for color mixing, do one color at a time. Never add like multiple colors at the same time. You only want to really be changing like one variable. I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, Panzer gray. It's kind of like a dark gray, like blackish color. Just gonna darken her up a little bit. There we go. Let's see here. Okay, that's actually looking pretty good. I'm gonna add some more gray to this mix. Just some light gray this time, not too dark. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna add a little bit of dark blue. Just a tiny bit to get us, I think this is the missing ingredient here. Yeah. A little bit more. Now I'm just going to add a little bit, a tiny little bit of maybe a color like yellow ochre, I think would be kind of the last missing piece here. There we go. Just a bit. I think I really like that. I think that's going to get us that color that we really want. Let's go ahead and see how it looks on the figure. I'm just going to take a little bit of paint at a time. And as I always say, the key to this is multiple thin layers as opposed to trying to get it all in one go. Never want to rush to failure. For this little logo, we're just going to paint around it. Shouldn't be too difficult. Just don't really want to have to paint that again, you know? Now I'm also going to repaint the helmet a little bit. Just kind of going to go over with my green mix I made and just go over it lightly. Don't need to coat the entire thing. I'm just kind of doing a very light layer uh, and just cleaning it up a little bit. I'm just going to completely redo all of the scratches and dings and things on the helmet so it's not a big deal. That's generally like the easiest part to, to fix. Let's move you down.
I'm really liking how this green is turning out so far. It's uh, definitely kind of cleaning up some of the issues I had with the original figure. It's also important not to forget to paint the back of this guy, which I just did. I uh, forgot. <laughs> so I'm just going to take the same green as before and just go and paint in these little back armor pieces here. Not too complicated, just make sure you do them, otherwise it'll look super weird from behind when none of the colors match. Alright, so while I'm still working with this guy, I'm going to go ahead and do some of the weathering for the chest. Uh, just going to do is kind of like the little uh, like yellow dings and things for the chest armor. going to start off with a little bit of yellow ochre. I might mix in a little bit of middle stone. We'll just see what kind of works here. Here we go. Gonna add a little bit of our green mix in there. Not a whole lot, just a tiny bit to kind of get it accentuated to the armor. Yeah, I'm gonna add more middle stone here. There we go. And then let's add some some light gray here. I have some pictures open from the 501st CRL, so I'm just going to do my best to match those exactly. And let's go up. Again, we are just stippling here. Okay, looks good. Let's do a little bit here. Put some more paint on the brush. Let's go here. Okay, it looks good. Do some work here. Little there. Let's do some right here. A little bit here. Let's go down here. Actually, let's do this. It actually really doesn't appear to be too much silver, but we'll add a little bit of silver inside. Tiny bit of silver, just add it. These little recesses. Okay, and we are stippling here. Oh, that's pretty good. Show that, up, show that effect up close. There we go. Now I want to add the effect for Boba's chain code. So I'm just going to a little bit of red. Now I want to add the effect for Boba's chain code. So I'm just going to a little bit of red here. Just a tiny bit. Tiny bit of the brush right there. We're just going to go right inside right here and just paint it in. Very carefully.
There we go. All right, so now I want to repaint this uh, these these uh, gauntlets to be a little bit of a lighter red color because I think they're just a little bit too dark. I'm gonna start off with. Actually, I'm gonna try using Vallejo red. This is this is kind of weird. There's two different reds. This is 71.102, and this is 71.003. Uh, this one's a little bit more purple, so I'm gonna start with this one, and if we need to, we can switch to the more like regular color red. Uh, but let's see how this one turns out first. Okay, let's pour a bit out here. There we go. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna add a little bit of light gray to this mixture. Let me get my mixing brush. There we go. Yeah, that's turning purple. That's not what we want. So we're gonna add some red. This is the brighter red color I was talking about before. Gonna add a little bit of uh, the yellow ochre into this. Move everything over a little bit so you can see better. Just gonna go ahead and start with the visors, see how this turns out. It's a lot brighter than the previous red was. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, because I think the previous red was a bit on the dark side. Unintentional pun. I think maybe a little bit of dark, dark gray here. Not too much, because gray is a very strong color here. Yeah, it's a really, really powerful color. Let's use some more yellow here. It's all about just trial and error, seeing what works, what doesn't work, experimenting. So you get something you really like. I think we might need a little bit more gray and a little bit more like a darker color for this. I think we'll be there. I think brown is the missing ingredient here. Just add a little bit of that. Yes, that looks much closer to what we want. A teeny bit of burnt umber in here. Again, not too much. We don't want to overpower the color. Yeah, I think brown was definitely the missing ingredient here in this mix. Add a bit more mud brown. Let's actually add a little bit of orange rust too. Just a teeny bit. Now let's try this mixture out. I think this is really just a mix between red and mud brown. It's really where we want to get this. Yeah, I'm liking I'm liking this mix right now. Feeling good about this. This is really close. I'm thinking just a little bit darker. Let's add some more mud brown. And then maybe just a drop of gray. I think. It's all about experimentation. Seeing what works and what doesn't work. This looks the same. Let's add a bit of brown, dark brown. Okay, let's go back to this.
pretty happy with this. I'm just going to go in and paint uh, this side of the visor now as well. So I forgot to do so earlier. Whoops. Let's go in here as well. There we go. I'm just got a tinge of blue to this just to make it a little bit more purple. Should drop. Might even be too much. Let's see. Let's just try it out. Take our time, go nice and slow. No need to rush. If you did mess anything up, I like to keep a Q-tip nearby. I have these little pointy ones, and you can just go right along the edge and clean it up. No one will know you ever messed up, besides you. I'm just gonna clean up this belt here real quick. The original print was like not perfect. I think this color should be close enough. Yeah, it is. All right, now we're gonna do the fun part and repaint the gauntlets as well. Just gonna use the same red mixture we used for the face mask on these gauntlets too. And just gonna have at it. Just gonna do a nice light thin coat, multiple light thin coats on these. Should do the trick. Now you can see pretty quickly the difference in color between the left and the right. Still hasn't dried obviously, but I think the red, the, the left color is a lot closer to the actual uh, Return of the Jedi colors than the, the purple is here. Alright, so I did the, I finished painting the like uh, gauntlets off screen just because this tutorial was already taking way too long. But they're done now. It's the same thing as the visor before, same color. I just painted them with my like, I think it's called like a chisel brush. I'm not quite sure. It's like a flat, flat tip. Not exactly pointy, just flat and thin, but he's looking really good. I have to say, this is already significantly improving this figure for me. Uh, now I'm just going to go and I'm going to paint the gloves. The gloves are pretty much just a straight neutral gray. However, one detail the figure is missing that the actual costume has is that there are finger pads on the gloves that are white as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the neutral gray. I'm going to paint, repaint this kind of glow-in-the-dark color with the neutral gray color. And then we're going to go back, and then we're going to paint in the like actual like tips of the gloves with the white color. So, uh, just going to use a good neutral gray. Right here I have dark gold gray, but it's, again, it's basically just neutral gray. Put that right there. Now let's get started. There we go. No more glow in the dark hands. Yay. Let's do the other hand now. I'm just gonna put that out right there. The glove, I guess I should say. I'm just gonna paint right over this glow in the dark green color and replace it with this nice neutral gray. Looks pretty good. I'm just gonna let it dry. I'm gonna go do another coat of this gray color and then it should be good to go. That definitely 
is already looking a lot better than the, the kind of glow in the dark color. I have to say, like with the jetpack too, like the, the color palette is really looking pretty good. So I'm pretty happy how this has turned out so far. I'm holding off on painting some of the details, like the weathering on the helmet, because I am going to give this a matte clear coat and then I'm going to go and actually start doing the weathering. Just for things like scratches and dings, I should have held off on like the silver for instance because when I give it the clear coat it's going to make everything flat. So I want to hold off on all that gloss shiny stuff until after the clear coat's applied. Uh, but yeah, it should, should be pretty soon and then we can move on. Alright, so now we're going to go and we're going to do the gloved fingers. The fingers are kind of like a white creamish color. I'm just going to start off with white and then I'm going to move on and add a little bit of cream, so let's start with that. Alright, there's our white right there, and then we're just gonna, I'm just gonna try and match this color on the glove. I'm thinking a bit of, a tiny bit of yellow ochre. Not a whole lot. So we have a little bit of yellow ochre, let's just mix in a, the tiniest bit. Let's go ahead and start painting these fingers. I'm just going to open up a reference photo to see exactly how these gloves should look. I'll put it up on screen so you can see it, so you can match it yourself. There we go. Actually, if you look at these fingers, the details are actually molded on here. I can see it. It's right there. That's kind of cool. I would say I don't know why they didn't paint it, but I, I already do know why they didn't paint it. Spoiler alert, it's cheaper not to paint it. And then they just have me paint it. It's a win-win for everyone. There we go. Looks like there's also some white on the thumb as well, so we're gonna have to paint that too. Let's see here. Yep, yep, you can see it's it's actually molded here as well. You can just paint the sculpt. It sculpted in, they just didn't paint it. Frustrating. There we go. That's all it is, really. I'm just going to do the same thing with the other hand now. I'm not going to record it just because it's a waste of time. Uh, once I have the both hands painted, I'm going to let it sit for a little bit, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to repaint it just to make it uh, nice and clean. All right, so the uh, right hand is now painted, left hand's painted. Everything's good to go. The final real like big paint app we're going to do is I'm just going to go and I'm going to paint the, I think these are called spats. I'm not quite sure what the technical term is. Gators, uh, these little leg wraps, we're just going to paint these real quick. Uh, basing on the photos, I think we're pretty much going to use the same color as these pouches right here. And I think that should be it. I think that's all we're really going to do as far as like paint apps go on this guy for now until we do the matte coat. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and mix this color. Uh, it's basically the color we already made. <laughs> I ran out of it. I uh, took too long to let it dry, and it dried out. So again, we're just gonna use a little bit of white, a little bit of uh, yellow ochre, and that's really just gonna be it. There we go. There we go. Let's add a little bit of that yellow ochre color we just got right here. Sweet. So we need a little bit more. That looks pretty good right there. Just gonna check my references real quick. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, let's go ahead and paint it. Just gonna use the chisel brush again that we've been using. 
and let's hit up these legs. Almost last thing, pretty much. Again, I suggest having a little uh, Q-tip on hand, so if you mess up, you can just quickly get that pink on. Uh, no stress. Again, we're gonna be using thin layers here. Thin, thin, thin paint. There we go. Now I'll just let them sit for a little bit. I'm gonna clean them up a little bit and then we're gonna come back to them once they've dried. All right, so Bob was pretty much done with all of the base painting. He's looking really good. I'm really satisfied with this. Um, the only thing now is that I'm gonna try and move the knee pads to be on the knees. Cause as you can see right now, when you bend them like this, as I said earlier in my like review portion, they're on the thigh and it's just weird. It poses weird, it doesn't look right to me. So I'm gonna see if we can't move them onto the, onto the knee. What I try and do is I'm gonna try and cut them away with an X-Acto knife and see if we can't just glue them here on the bottom of the knee and see if that won't work. So let's see what happens. Just try it out, experiment. Okay, let's see right here. Let's bend this knee, get him a little, just cut. There we go. The knee is free. Let's get rid of this, the leftovers here. Just gonna carefully scrape away this grossness. All right, now let's try and paint over that. Gonna start off with, let's see here. Just gonna paint over it with a bit of aggressor gray right here. This is pretty close to a neutral gray. It's almost a perfect match for the flight suit right there. And that's looking pretty good. All right, so my original plan of just attaching the knee pads to the bottom of the knee didn't quite work because there was an issue when you would move the bottom of the leg, the knee pad would just kind of pop off because of the sculpt here. So instead what I'm doing is I'm now gonna try and attach some 1 8 inch ribbon to the knee pad and see if we can't use this uh, to hold the knee in place, give it a little bit of elastic so it has a little bit of bend uh, and see if that'll work. So we're just cutting it and just super gluing it directly onto the knee pad. Seems like a pretty stable connection. It's got a little bit more super glue and then we should be good to go. Let's put a little bit more on here. I would say apply small amounts at a time because if you apply too much, it won't dry. That's looking pretty good. And now this is pretty stable. I'm liking this. So I cut the string to size and I'm just gonna super glue it right there onto the knee pad. All right, so it actually works pretty well. So the knee pad isn't like firmly attached now, like it'll stay put when you have it like that. Uh, however, with this 1 8 inch elastic in the back, what it allows it to do is that, you know, you can turn the leg, you can, you can pose the knee pad with the leg if you want, it'll move with it. However, now also you can bend it down like that, and then you can just adjust the knee pad down like that as well, and he can get into all these poses. So I'll just show you real quick with the uh, with him like kneeling. Essentially, the knee pad is now properly on the knee instead of on the thighs. So I have I have out engineered Hasbro. Nice, perfect. All right. So now that I've done the first knee pad, I will show you how to do the second knee pad exactly. I wanted to figure it out first because. Uh, <laughs> My prototyping phase is a little bit weird, and I don't want to have to have people sit through that, but I'll just show you how to do it. Uh, I like to bend the knee first to give the maximum amount of space to work with, and then I like to do from outside in. So I just bend the knee pad here, outside, just like that. Get that focus. Now I'll just get our X-Acto knife and slowly go and cut this knee pad free. There we go, knee pad is free. Wouldn't be the worst idea ever to heat this up real quick just to make sure it doesn't like get like super messed up when, when we bent it, but I'm just gonna manually reshape it in my hands real quick. All right, so now we're gonna clean up the knee area. Just gonna take our X-Acto knife, 
Make sure everything's nice and flush here. Looks good. Now that's done. We can just take uh, our like new whatever neutral gray color we're using. I'm using uh, like dark gold gray. It's a nice color. Neutral gray, medium gray, whatever. Just as long as you can match the bodysuit approximately. We're just gonna paint right over all that. And there we go. Now for the actual knee pad, we're gonna start off. I like to start off on the inside. Just gonna put a little bit of super glue right here on the top side of this knee pad. Then we will get our 1 8 elastic and we'll go ahead and put that on here. Just gonna touch it right there to the end, just like that, and let it kind of sit a little bit. It should bond almost instantly. It's like an instant, instant bond. Once you get that bonded, I would let it sit for a little bit, and then we're gonna put another little dab of super glue on this thing. I'm just gonna do it on the outside right here. There we go, and that should make this nice and strong. So it won't come off easily unless you like rip it, but for my purposes, for posing and photography, it shouldn't be an issue. Now we're going to fit it onto the, onto the figure. We're gonna have him in the standing position, and all we're gonna do is we're just gonna put it on here, and then we're just going to measure and see where we need to cut it. So there we go, put that there. Now we'll just wrap this around here, around the back. And then I would say make it kind of tight. I mean, it's elastic, so it could stretch and deform. I would say make it a little tight. I would say don't pull it, but just see where it naturally falls right there on the knee pad. And I'm just gonna mark it, and then we're gonna cut it right where I mark it. That looks about right here. There we go. Now I'll just get my scissors real quick and we'll just cut right where we marked. If you're in doubt, I would cut uh, I would cut further than you think you need to, a little bit on the far side and then you can clean it up later. All right, there we go, that's good. Now we will put it back on the knee, as it was before. And then we will wrap it around. And yeah, if you did it right, it should just naturally come to meet right there. So now we're just gonna put a little super glue there on the top. And I like to just kind of use a X-Acto knife to guide this in here. There we go. Then we can put a little more super glue, same as the other side. Just make sure everything bonds nicely. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put a matte clear coat on this guy so we can begin doing some detailing. I'm going to be using Rust-Oleum Matte Finish. This is the clear protective finish, the matte version. This stuff's really good. However, sometimes I find that it doesn't completely make things as matte as I want. To finish it up, I'm going to be using uh, Tamiya TS-80 Flat Clear. This stuff is dope. This stuff is awesome. This is the best stuff ever. The only thing is I use it sparingly because these bottles are so small. So I like to do what I can with this because this stuff is very strong, very protective. And then this is kind of like the like the, the finisher, I would say. So I, I did a little, I'm gonna do a little bit of this when I do it and we'll see how it turns out. See, so yeah, I gotta use the Rust-Oleum first and then hit it with a little Tamiya afterwards. So let's do it. All right, so here's how he turned out. He's looking awesome. He's nicely matte, uh, no longer shiny like he used to be. I hit the jetpack as well with the matte. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and start working on weathering him and just kind of adding in some more detail there. I think I'm gonna start off with weathering the jumpsuit first. The reason why I waited until after that I did the matte coat to do the jumpsuit is because the matte coat will give this something to cling to rather than just being right on the plastic, which would make it a little bit, you know, make it rub off easily. So hopefully the matte coat will give it just a little bit of extra stuff to cling on to. All right, so normally to weather this guy, I would use a uh, Tamiya kit like this, a weathering master kit. This stuff's awesome. 
However, unfortunately, I cannot find my uh, my other weathering kit, which has the colors I really need for this, like the the suit color. All I have is mud and sand, which is is okay, but isn't quite perfect for this. So I'm going to use a little bit of this uh, and then some old kind of old standard techniques for it. All right, so we're going to start off with using the mud color. I'm just going to grab some of this on my little sponge, and we're going to go in the like little crevices of this. Uh, costume and then we're going to wipe away the top with our finger so that way we can get inside of where the uh, holes are here. So let's wipe in there, wipe away here, wipe away the top. We're just going to be doing this all over the figure where we can find little uh, ridges like that. And just get, get in there. Something I want to caution against is like overweathering. I think a lot of people tend to overweather their figures, myself included. I used to do that a lot more. However, since I've become aware of it, I think I've done a better job of keeping my weathering to like a, a reasonable amount than what I used to. It used to be like just ridiculous. Like I would just, they would be completely dirty, <laughs> which isn't quite really the look you want to go for. Now I'm a lot better at like keeping it like a realistic level of weathering where it doesn't look like they just jumped in mud but more so that they live in like a dirty world. Here we go, let's get in there and wipe away. However, some people told me that they've seen the actual costume in person and it was really dirty so you could certainly go that way. I mean, it's your figure. You can you can do it however you want. Me, I like to keep it a little bit a little bit on the cleaner side, I would say. Wipe all this off. Had a little bit of, of weathering to the jumpsuit, not as much as on the legs. A little bit of just wear and tear right here on the gloves, so they aren't squeaky clean right there. I like that. We'll touch up these little bags a little bit, just give them something to be dirty with. Can't forget the back as well. Jeez. Almost missed this. Got to weather it underneath the knee pads as well since we can now weather this. I'm going on with a little bit of um, of like black dry brushing inside here. Just gonna get some black on my brush just a teeny bit and just kind of get inside here. The nice dry brush. Rub on the top. Make sure we don't have anything there. And then with this dry brush, we can just lightly go over these pouches. There we go, that looks pretty good. Gonna dry brush these braids as well. Then rub the top as well, so make sure that there's nothing on the surface. Again, I'm just using a little bit of black Vallejo Air paint here. And I'm going in here. And I'm just wiping it away, just like that. Go underneath as well, right there. Looks pretty good. Gonna dry brush these gauntlets with a little bit of black as well. Getting all those little spaces, the crevasses, if you will. 
going to dry brush the feet a little bit. If I had the other Tamiya weathering kit with the suit color, I would probably use that. However, I don't, so I'm just going to dry brush, which is pretty much a similar effect. I'm just going to go in these crevices here down by the feet because the ankles, the kind of like the ankle area, is definitely the most weathered part on Boba Fett. So. Just gonna rub it in like that. Just dry brush these arms a little bit. Dry brush these pouches a little bit. So we're trying to get in all these little crevices here is our goal. Just doing this and then going. And then wiping as much as I can. I would say go slowly with this, like don't try and do too much at a time because then the paint will like dry and you'll be kind of screwed. You won't be able to get it off. I'm liking where this is going here with the uh, with the dry brushing on the legs, especially on the back. The back looks really good. Look at that. Ooh, I love it. Big fan. All right, so we're done weathering the feet. I think they're looking pretty good. Uh, like I said, you could always add more if you wanted to. However, I like the more subtle weathering here. I don't really like to go super in depth with it. So now that this is done, what I'm going to suggest is that you go and do a final layer of uh, matte clear coat. We're we'll using that uh, Tamiya TS-80 again, and this should be good to go. This is about all you're going to really need to do here, so let's hit it. All right, so now that's all done, out of the way, we're now going to go and continue weathering the armor. I'm going to start off by doing the chest, fixing that up, and the cod piece. Uh, I think that the original weathering I did, while well, it was good, I think it was a little bit too subtle for what we want to go for, so I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre here. Right there, I think yellow ochre is the perfect color for what we want to be doing here. And then we're going to use our thin brush. Where is he? Here's the thin brush. Oops. Here's a nice thin brush. We're going to be taking this yellow ochre and we're just going to go into the little holes on the armor and we're going to be painting these yellow. Basically, I'm going to be redoing what we did earlier because I think it was just a little bit too subtle. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, so I'm just going to be subtle, but for this, I want to make this weathering a little bit more visible. Okay, now we'll do the cod piece as well. There's a big scratch right here. Alright, let's just add a little bit of stippling to the back. I don't really have a reference for the butt of this. I'm just going to kind of go off of what we've already done. Uh, 
That's going to be covered up. Not too worried about that. All right, now we can go add the silver. Just a little bit of silver right there. All we're going to do with the silver is just go inside of where we just did the yellow stippling. Just do a little bit of silver stippling, and it's going to add a cool layered effect. I'll see the cod piece as well. And there we go. That looks pretty good. Got that covered. Now we're just gonna go ahead and add some silver highlights to the armor. First, I'm gonna paint this little silver, I don't know you call this, little touch pad he has on his wrist here. There we go, that looks good. Now let's add some silver weathering to the armor. Just gonna go over all the ridges with a little bit of silver. Give them some wear and tear. Again, doesn't need to be too extreme of an effect. It can be pretty subtle. Let's make sure we paint these right there. There we go. We can add some like scuffs and things to this. All right, now let's work on the helmet. Helmet, helmet, helmet. All right, so, just looking at the pictures, look like there's some weathering. I'm just gonna go straight off of the pictures online I found. It's gonna do my best to exactly copy the weathering on the helmet here. There we go. Now before we go any further, uh, something I noticed is that on the visor, wherever there's a silver mark, like on the red visor, there's kind of a darker, there's a hint of the darker green paint chip underneath. So we're gonna mix a little bit of a dark green color that we can use to accentuate that, similar to how we did the yellow. 
Gonna use light green chromate as my base right there. You're just gonna add some, let's see, some millstone. So drop, and then some Panzer Gray. This should get us approximately there. Probably need to add some more green. Yeah, it was more more than I wanted. That's okay. Okay, I like that. That should work well. All right, so first we're gonna paint beneath the areas we want, and then we'll go over on top. Let's see how this looks real quick. Okay, that works. Uh, I might actually add it, make it a little darker. Actually, let's add a little bit of blue. A little bit of blue. Yeah, that that's gonna look good. Okay, that should be good. All right, let's start here. First of all, there's a scratch going up right here, so we're gonna use this color and do that scratch. Go into stipple. Then there's a, there's some scratches right here. And there's a kind of like a scar right here. Got that. Then there's a line right there. Then we'll do some kind of tears right there. Now, continuing on from the scar, there's some stuff here. Now over here, we need to do a little bit right there. There we go. And then some curving up. And then just a little bit here on each cheek. Cool. Just gonna add a little bit more chipping down here. Okay, I think that looks good. Now we're gonna go, we're gonna paint dark accents where all the all the holes are gonna be, or all the like the the metal scabs, I guess you call them. There should be one right here. And one right here, kind of in the middle. Not a big one. A little small detail right there, and then one here. There's a big one over here. That should be good for now. Now to bust out the silver, my favorite part. I love painting silver weathering. Just gotta pop a little silver down right here. Now let's get started. All right, first up, let's do the visor. go. Now I'll paint this little scar here. There we go. We'll do some stippling over here. It looks like there are little silver dings all along this chin right here. So we got those in there. Good, good, good.
Now we'll paint the dent, the infamous dent. Now we're going to go back to these dark areas we painted earlier and just paint silver inside them. Again, we're going to be stippling. I think that's most of the weathering I want to do now. I'm just going to paint the visor now, and then we should be pretty much good to go. For the visor, I'm just going to use a little bit of Vallejo Air Black here. I'm just going to paint over it. Uh, we already did the visor. I just, there's some areas where I kind of, like, some paint got where it wasn't supposed to go, so I'm just going to clean that up now. Cool. That's literally it. That's all I wanted to do. Now we're just going to hit this with some gloss varnish once it's dry, and then we're going to be set, good to go, done. I had to paint this dried, so we're just going to hit it with the gloss varnish real quick. There's a little bit of gloss varnish right there. We're just going to put a small amount on our brush real quick. Here we go. And we're just going to paint this visor so it's nice and shiny. Make sure you have a nice, thin, even spread over the whole visor, so the whole thing is shiny. I'm also going to hit the chain code now, again using the gloss varnish, give that a little shine. Wipe off anything on the surface. Should be good to go. I almost forgot something. Uh, well, Hasbro forgot it. I'm remembering for them. Uh, they forgot to paint the little inside of his little boots. So I'm going to paint those real quick. And then now we're really going to be done. Just use Panzer Gray again. Just got to paint the inside of these. And then we can move on with life and continue. There we go. All right, I feel so much better now. Couldn't I couldn't sleep with this.
There we go. Alright, it's done now. I've painted the little tips of his little boots. So now they are nice and shiny and very painful if you were to uh, stub your toe into somebody. Would not be a good day for them. Alright, so looking back, I realized that the, uh, the Wookiee braids aren't quite painted properly on this figure, so I'm just going to go and repaint all of them. Uh, this one is going to be a nice, uh, we're going to paint this in mud brown, and we're just going to go from there. So I'm going to do this off camera, but you can get the general idea of what I'm doing. Just going and painting these Wookiee braids over, and making them a little bit more accurate to the colors in the film. Alright, so I just found out something that shattered my worldview. Uh, Boba Fett's right pouch on his, uh, on his belt is actually khaki. Whereas the left pouch is uh, is is like off white slash cream, I, I didn't know that, <laughs> so I actually just painted it off camera. I, I forgot I was I wasn't recording, but I'll show it to you now. I'll show you my process. I did. All I did was I just mixed uh, a dark color, like a dark brown color, and I painted underneath. The like the bottom layer is like a dark brownish grayish color. It's really gross. Uh, just a nasty color. And then what I did was, after I painted that brown underneath, then I went over it, I dry brushed a little bit of kind of like a the, like a pinkish khaki color on top of it, and that did the trick. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna wait till this dries, and I'm going to uh, put a little TS-80 on it to clear it up. But yeah, now we have the actual correct uh, alternating color belts, where we have the, the off-white on the left, and the cream, or the khaki on Boba's right. Uh, and we also did the Wookiee braids. I'm not exactly sure if this is 100% correct, but it looked like there was kind of like a light brown one, so I painted that with a little blue and white little cord. I painted the black on there. I painted the white a little whiter, and I added a little gray one right there in the back. I uh, painted a little red detail right there. I think this is pretty close to how the Wookiee braids actually are. Uh, not positive, but it's good enough for me. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, at this point, I'm pretty much done with this figure. I kind of want to move on to do other things, but it's been a fun, good time making it, and uh, he's finally finished. I just keep on finding little details, like this stupid pouch I didn't even know about. Hasbro didn't know about. They didn't even paint it, but I got it. I'm not missing you. I found you. So, all right, let's go and uh, see how he turned out uh, in the finished review. All right, so here's the final figure, and I am super satisfied with him. This is, I think, probably one of the most accurate Return of the Jedi Bobas out there. Uh, definitely beats the model kits, I think, once it's all painted up. Just, you know, a lot of changes, a lot of little paint changes, but I think that once you make those, it's a really solid figure, especially after the knee pad modification. I mean, this is, look at that. It's so awesome. I love it. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I only really made one change off camera after I finished the figure, and that was to paint the, I believe it's called a girth belt in the back right here with the black and the silver. It's pretty simple. It shouldn't be too hard to do. I don't really think I need to show that exactly. But there it is for those who want to see it. That's all I did. Besides that, it's pretty much the same. So hopefully this tutorial helped out. Again, I don't think this is a bad figure necessarily. Uh, in fact, I think it's actually a pretty good figure. However, I think that the way that Hasbro released it was not the best. And a lot of the stuff I did here, like the paint matching, I think Hasbro could have done, and it could have made this easily like a, a top five figure for Black Series. But a little bit of modifications, a little bit of fun, a little project, and you have yourself, I think, probably the best Return of the Jedi Boba out there. So until next time, peace.